Hey church family, Matt here again. Just want to give everyone an update on what reopening looks like for us here at UCC. I know it's been a question on lots of our minds over the last several weeks. When are we going to open back up for church? And one of the real encouraging things that we've gotten to live out is the fact that the church is never closed, even if our building is closed. And yet, still we miss each other. We long to be together again, share the same space again, whatever that looks like. And many of you have heard or read by now the state of New Mexico's decision to gradually start to reopen things, including churches, houses of worship. After much prayer and consideration, leadership at UCC has decided to target June 7th as our first date to reopen and resume in-person gatherings. We'll continue online services for the next two weeks, and we are committed to making an online worship experience available even after we open up again in order to stay connected with all of our people that cannot be here in person with us no matter what decision we make about opening our doors. Now here's the thing about any date that we choose. Some are going to think that it's too soon, some are going to think it's not soon enough, and we certainly understand that. But we believe that June 7th is the date that serves our church family best. For starters, in order to meet the state requirements lined out for churches to reopen, we have several things to get prepared for. What facility to meet in, what that looks like, how to clean and disinfect and sanitize everything before and after services, how to set up our spaces for the safest possible return, what elements actually go into our in-person gatherings, and how to continue to provide online services for those that cannot and should not be here when we do open our doors again. These are just some of the things we'll need to consider as we move forward with all of this. And along with that, and maybe even more importantly, we have to make decisions that are best for the entire body. And when you make decisions that are for the good of an entire group, then that always means sacrifice. And as a family, you've been so patient and gracious and encouraging through all of this, especially to the staff. And on behalf of the staff and leadership, we can't thank you enough. Now we're asking that you extend a little more grace and hang in there a little longer. And I've got to tell you, when that day comes and when some of us get to see each other at the building again, it's going to look a lot different. Just in adhering to the state guidelines alone, which we are committed to doing, everyone will be required to wear a mask. We'll have to continue to practice social distancing with six feet of separation between individuals or family units. Our occupancy will be limited to 25% of capacity. People with known close contact to a person who is lab confirmed to have COVID-19 cannot attend services until the end of the 14-day isolation period. People are supposed to perform temperature checks at home before leaving, and if you have a fever, you have to stay at home. And on top of all that, one of the requirements is to discontinue choir or congregational singing or chanting. It really says that. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. No one can keep me from singing. And I get it. I, lo I love to sing too, especially at, ch at a church building with, with other people. But these are the kind of things that we're having to think through and, and deal with. Like, how do you have a worship service without singing? And if you thought that laundry list of things sounded like a mouthful, don't worry. I'm not going to make you remember all of that. We're going to post all of the state's COVID safe practices on our website, on our social media platforms, and email them out to everyone so you can read them for yourselves. And what I do want you to do is to be on the lookout over the next couple of weeks for communication from us through email or through social media, Facebook or Instagram. And be sure to check our website, www.church4thecity.com as we lay out a plan for what our first in-person gathering will actually look like based on the guidelines the state has laid out for us. One thing that we cannot afford to do is we cannot afford to divide over things in the middle of this pandemic that's absolutely affecting everything. In the past, I've talked about this pandemic as being a disruption because of the ways it has literally disrupted everything. But looking back, that probably wasn't the best choice of words on my part, referring to the effects of COVID-19 as a disruption. Because I bet if any of us talked to people that had lost a family member or a loved one due to COVID-19, they would characterize it as more than a disruption. 
If any of us talk to somebody that lost their job or, or was evicted from their home or missed meals or got stuck in another country or couldn't see a loved one that was hospitalized in the middle of this, they would probably also characterize this as more than a disruption. So if we're going to get through this and be unified on the other side of this thing, then we have to continue to love radically. We have to continue to extend grace. We have to continue to serve. We have to continue to sacrifice. And I know many of us are desperately looking forward to the day we can be together and worship in the same space again. I'm looking forward to that day too. But until that day comes, and remember, the target date we're looking at is June 7th. Until we get there, no matter what that looks like, we will love the Lord and we will honor Him first. We will also love and honor our neighbor. And we will be a body of Jesus followers, disciples that carry themselves with character and integrity and excellence through this wilderness called COVID-19. And hopefully the story people tell about UCC after the dust settles from all of this is that the University Church of Christ really is a church for the city. Love you all. Blessings and peace.